In this video, we will cover the explicit cursors. As in the previous video, we have already discussed like if I want to control the execution while dealing with the multiple records, we have to define the explicit cursors. So by the time you are declaring or defining a cursor, it will be having some number of steps as first of all, you will have to declare a cursor. When you will declare a cursor, basically you will have to associate a select statement along with the cursor. So anytime after that, when you will manipulate that cursor, it will be getting the record from the uh, associated select statement. But when you declare, you only uh, set the particular select statement, but it will not be executed. When you open the cursor, basically at that time in the memory, one active set is generated, which is actually a result of the execution of a select statement. So all the results which are there, which we have to retrieve will be there in the active set with which we can go for the fetch operation. Fetch is an iterational process for retrieving the complete set of records from the active sets. And once we have fetched all the data, we can close it. So as you can see here, first of all, we are opening it, then we start fetching. And when we are done with fetching, we will close it. So according to that, we have some set of attributes as well. Like here, you can find row count, which will give you the number of rows which are affected or retrieved during the execution of a cursor. Found, if you are opening a cursor and you start fetching and in the fetching statement, in the fetching cycle, if you found the data, you can use this found attribute and it will return a true. Similarly, not found will be the antonym, means it will do the opposite thing. If you found something, this not found will return you a false, means this found and not found both will return you a boolean value. Is open will basically check like whether your cursor is open or not. As here, in the steps, you can see there is a step called open. So at any type of execution, you can, if you want to check like whether your cursor is open right now or not, you can go for is open attribute. So now let's get started with the implementation of the explicit cursor. So here in this implementation of explicit cursor, you can see like in the declare section, I have declared a couple of variables like EMP number that is EMP ID and EMP name where I'll take the employee ID and last name. And here I have used the type attribute for setting the data types for these couple of variables. Right after that, I have taken a cursor with the keyword cursor with the name EMP underscore cursor and is after is you can start writing the sub query which you want to associate with the cursor. And here you can check like select employee ID last name from employees. All right. So basically I'm selecting a couple of fields, employee ID and last name, which I will put in the variables, EMP number and EMP name one by one using the cursor. So right after that, I have declared a begin block. I have started a begin block rather, and there is a phase open. So as I said, this is the declare and this is the open. These are the two different phases. As soon as you have opened it, you can start fetching and you can also use the percent is open attribute to check like whether the particular cursor is open or not. Since here I have just opened it. So I'm not checking it here in this particular program. Now inside this loop, I have just started a basic loop and here in the iteration loop statement here, I have started the fetching stage of this EMP cursor. All right. So here you can check like this fetching is actually fetching the data from the EMP cursor and putting the value into EMP number and EMP name. You have to match the sequence of the column and the variables so as here it is EMP ID comma last name. So here I'll have to pass first for the EMP variable for the EMP ID and then variable for the employee last name. All right. Now, since it is a loop, I'll have to pass the condition when I want this loop to get terminated. So for that, I have used this exit when and here I have used a couple of attributes that is row count and not found. All right. So when EMP cursor row count is greater than 10 means as soon as it reaches more than 10, 
I want this loop to get terminated. That means I want maximum of 10 records from this particular program. And if it is not 10, maybe if it is less than 10, so there is an OR condition and stating like if any it means any record is not found all right like EMP cursor person not found means as soon as you will start getting new records from the active set of the cursor you will stop fetching and this loop will get terminated but if this particular condition doesn't take place that means I have successfully read the values from the active set and as I said maximum of 10 records will be read in this particular program because of this particular condition and if I have read I will print the value that is first the ID then separated with the colon and then the last name and right after that when I'm done with the reading I'll close the loop I will uh, I will end the loop and I will close the cursor alright so let's execute this and see how the output is looking like alright let me just set the environment first so I have set the server output on again I have written all these statements let's execute it and here you can see 100 till 109 these 10 records have been printed since I have more than 10 records here so as soon as this first condition will be satisfied here is an OR, OR operator so this loop will be terminated so this is how using this cursor you can start retrieving or manipulating multiple records all together at a time in up any of the PLSQL block in Oracle.